we do have any number of progressive advocates in Sacramento as well, bless their hearts, Taxpayers for Improved Public Safety, Coalition for Effective Public Safety, uh, Friends Committee, uh, of course, and the ACLU, uh, always there to help us who are on the Public Safety Committee and in the legislature uh, to back us up and give us a little bit of credibility because, again, uh, our Public Safety Committee, uh, as my Republican colleagues like to refer to it, is the Criminal Protection Committee. And where the shock jocks in Southern California like to mock us by calling us the Pervert Committee. This is, in, you know, this is so very unfortunate because I, I don't think it goes both ways. I do believe that we all, irrespective of partisan identification, all have the same goal, greater public safety in our communities. We approach it from different perspectives, but whereas we recognize, if not applaud, uh, and are trying to further uh, educate some of those who are these, quote, uh, law and order, tough on crime folks, uh, to see things in a different way, because clearly the way we're doing it now ain't working whatsoever for anybody. Uh, they, on the other hand, resort to really adolescent name calling and character assassination if you dare approach this differently than they. I refer to it as the new McCarthyism. If you don't do it their way, they will go after you and your reputation and try to knock you down altogether. Uh, I'm certain you are all well familiar with the failed statistics to which I refer. Uh, the national Recidivism rate, I think by definition, those who will return into the system within, depending upon whose definition, either 18 months or three years, nationally about 33 percent. Here in California, 66 percent. The national parole completion rate is 42 percent. Here in California, 21 percent. Approximately 50 percent of those coming out of our state prison system, and keep in mind, 90 percent of everyone's in is coming out. So I remind my colleagues, it's not whether you want them to come out, folks, it's how we want them to come out. So currently, about 50% are coming out of our system functionally illiterate, 80% with a drug or alcohol problem, about 70% unemployable, 30% will find themselves homeless within a year, and then we wonder why we have a recidivism rate of 66%. We're giving people very few tools to be able to get back on their feet and re-enter their communities and reunite with their families. Now, for all these failed statistics, we are spending by far more of our general fund percentage-wise on corrections than any other state in the country. Just three years ago, when Arnold Schwarzenegger took his office, we were spending 5.4% of our general fund on the Department of Corrections. Today, we're at 8.5 percent. Out of a hundred billion dollar budget, we're spending about eight and a half billion on corrections and getting these failed results. If Prop 83 is to pass, and unfortunately it has polls over 70 percent, this is the so-called Jessica's Law, uh, which I won't go into right now, but I might urge you to vote no on uh, November 7th. Uh, has about a half billion dollar annual price tag to it without any new money identified to pay for this. So we'll soon be at 9%. We will be at 10% within a year or so, certainly with the mandates coming from the federal court with our in-prison health care system and then some of the other mandates that will come soon. We will top 10%, 11%. And at some point, I hope people are going to begin to ask, when is enough enough? And when do we realize the track that we're on is just throwing good money after bad and destroying families and destroying communities? I don't know that there's another state in the country that's spending more than five or six percent of their general fund on corrections. So we're paying very high costs for ever less effective public safety. With regard to our parole system, the Little Hoover Commission held hearings and published a report a couple years ago, called it a billion dollar failure. A billion dollar failure. About 65% of those on parole are seeing their parole officer once every six weeks. 
and even high risk sex offenders and other high risk offenders are only seeing their parole officers once every two weeks case loads for these parole officers is completely impossible of course we're the only state in the country that requires ostensibly three years of parole for everybody irrespective of the nature of the crime criminal history or likelihood of reoffense so we're not using limited resources though apparently unlimited resources when it comes to corrections very efficiently whatsoever when Governor Schwarzenegger took office in 2004, realizing there was at least a problem, if not a crisis, in our Department of Corrections, he put together an independent review panel headed by Governor George Duke Majin, George, go to, use a gun, go to jail, Duke Majin, and a group of other tough on crime guys to look at our criminal justice system and our prison system in California and come up with some recommendations. This was part of uh, the governor's uh, reinvention of state government. So Governor Duke Majin and his independent review panel reported back with a very thick report with nearly 300 recommendations. The top priority of his nearly 300 recommendations was that before any other reforms could be put in place, that the inmate population must be reduced. First and foremost, reduce the inmate population. State of Texas, which incarcerates at much higher rates than California, we rank about 17th out of 50 states in incarceration rates, though we're spending twice as much as any other state per general fund uh, on corrections. State of Texas had released 8,000 inmates between 2001 and 2003 at their at height of their budget crisis. Through risk assessments, they determined the lowest risk offenders, least likely to reoffend, and released by some months 8,000 inmates. So again, George Duke Major's recommendation reduced the inmate population. At that time, Governor Schwarzenegger held a press conference with George Duke Majin. We had 161,000 inmates approximately in our system. That was June of 2004. And the governor announced that by June 2005, we would reduce the inmate population to 147,000. Well, of course, now we've passed June 2006, and we're at about 173,000 inmates in our system, going quickly in the opposite direction. And the governor's own projections show that we will hit 190,000 and soon 200,000 in our system within the next couple of years. And in fact, this prison reform proposal that he put forward in his special session, which I don't even uh, credit with being reform, it's really just a prison building program, that uh, should we have followed him down that $6 billion path, which is what it was going to cost us, and built tens of thousands of new beds that by the time it was all built out we would have seen our inmate population grow because we weren't dealing with the core problems that need reforming which you are addressing here today that we would have still been nearly at 200 percent capacity after the build out 10 and 15 years from now so we barely be treading water after spending six billion dollars and incarcerating tens of thousands of additional Californians and not getting to the core problems of our criminal justice system here in California. 